Mosaic is, as you can imagine, uh, an extraordinary opportunity. We are embarking upon one of the most amazing Arctic expeditions of history um, to measure change, the rapid changes that are happening in the system that affect global climate. We need to understand the Arctic climate system better, and that requires measurements year-round, including the winter season, from the central Arctic. So the only way to get there is to let us freeze in on the Siberian side of the Arctic, then use the ice drift to drift across the Arctic and take these measurements for a full year. We found a, a flow that is, on the one hand side, it has the typical ice conditions that we found here, so a lot of ice that has uh, formed just in the last week, 30, 40 centimeters thick, held by a few thicker, rich structures, 80 centimeters to 1 meter 50 thick. All the flow was very well intact when we came here, and we could see from satellite images that it survived the summer as one piece, which made us chose the slow. The first weeks of the expedition have been totally exhausting, but it's really awesome. It's really fun. This is why we've been working for so long to make this happen. And it's really exciting to see so many people working hard together. We had temperatures up to minus 25. And it is really challenging because a lot of things do not work anymore. Like batteries don't last long. Uh, if you have any kind of plastic straps, they just break. You can't write with a normal pen. You always have to have a pencil. Of course, your fingers and feet just start freezing. And this is quite challenging. My, my personal highlight is, um, well, just being on the bridge and seeing the progress that is being made. And then maybe at the end of the day to look back and see what you've achieved. So we had a lot of instruments to put in in a very short amount of ship time. And my biggest concern was the weather windows that had the weather not cooperated. We really could not have completed the project, but we were very fortunate to have great weather with really only one day uh, down due to fog and, and wind. So it went very well. Um, and we did get all the instruments in within the time frame allotted. So the flow has, over the last days, had various smaller cracks here and there and smaller leads open and closed. And that was exciting to experience, to feel the rumbling when the ice basically cracked under my feet. Um, I didn't feel any danger, but I did feel that, oh, my project might suffer because of this. And indeed, I'm gonna to have to delay raising my tower because of that crack. But that's the Arctic, and that's, that's why we're here. We're studying these kind of processes. When I came up to the bridge this morning at seven, I had no clue about anything. But then uh, I was immediately told though that over the night, starting at 4 a.m., things have really changed. The big lead closed and turned into a, a ridge right next to our power line. Uh, in the aft of the ship, we lost some ice. On the port side, we had open water. So it looked very different, but still we see that the camp as such is still intact. So we made a good choice in terms of placing all the equipment so that's intact. But now we have to see what happens if the pressure releases again, if the flow might disintegrate into more pieces. We'll see. The research camp is really fantastic. We've taken advantage of the ice that we have around us. There's this fortress, this very heavily ridged area where the ice has kind of come together and made some stability and we're building a lot of our cities along that. If I now compare this camp to our first drawings and our plans that we made, we very well match that. So the main ideas of the concept are still intact. So we have Mad City at the most outermost post. We have the ROV as a separate branch. We have the Ocean City in the middle of the things. And we still have enough space to put all the other smaller sampling sites that don't need that much infrastructure. I'm really excited about Met City, the atmosphere part, because we're right on the border between this thick ridged sea ice and this kind of new thin um, kind of melt potty sea ice and so it's kind of the old arctic and the new arctic right together and we get the opportunity to measure both of them together to kind of see how things have changed over uh, these past years so the open data policy is really important for um for mosaic because we're um, investigating a very big question, uh, climate change. So the output which we generate, the data which we obtain, should be used in generations to come and give insights. Every scientist on the world will be able to work with this data and gather new insights in the years to come. 
one of the great things about Mosaic is we have so many people from so many different nations and disciplines. But that's also one of the biggest challenges. How do we get all those people working together? We had a great collaboration with uh, our Russian colleagues that contributed significantly to the setting up the distributed network. We had great collaboration with Chinese colleagues, with people from the US and many other institutions. So that's a true international experience here. The first next challenge now is to really establish all the smaller sampling sites that are not that obvious. We need to do more mapping of different sites. We started to build the first main roads and we have to establish them. We have to force people to stick to these roads, although it might be easier to walk straight somewhere. Uh, so we have to really establish this culture of living on the flow and to maintain the flow as good and disturbing it as little as possible.